All right, everyone, uh, I wanted to make a quick video and talk about the old optical triggering system for the uh, older uh, Sony flashes. So I have here a uh, Sony HVL43M. And uh, so this is a flash that can be triggered wirelessly using the uh, your camera's pop-up flash. So I have here the Sony Alpha 65 and so you use this pop-up flash uh, to trigger this guy. So neither of these contain uh, radio uh, transmitters or receivers um, so, so they don't communicate using radio like the newer flashes do. I think the there's an HVL 43AM that uh, uh, has a radio receiver in the flash and you can you can get a transmitter for your camera but you know I don't own those uh, I have the older system uh, I don't know why Sony has put off integrating uh, radio flash or radio uh, transmitters in their flash system for so long uh, but uh, you know I can't really fault them because I think uh, many other um, camera companies have done the same. I think Canon uh, also um, have put off doing uh, a, a built-in radio uh, transmitter and receiver in their system. I can't talk about Nikon because I don't know very much about Nikon systems. So anyway, um, you know, I, and a few years ago I bit the bullet and uh, just got myself this flash. Uh, and so now I'm stuck with this uh, optical triggering system. So the thing I want to talk about today is how these two things uh, communicate with each other uh, because it's not as simple as a, a simple um, optical triggering uh, system that you can buy on Amazon for example. Uh, you, know, you can buy these little attachments that fit onto the Hachu uh, mount of your flash and all it does is it as soon as it um, perceives a flash uh, it will fire this flash. Um, so that and so those systems do exist but that's not what's going on with, uh, with this particular system. And you know that this is true if you've ever used this uh, flash off camera. You'll notice that there's a series of flashes coming off of your pop-up flash uh, before this guy goes off. I also suspected that there was something more going on to this uh, trigger, optical triggering system uh, because you can take this flash off camera and it can you can still do TTL metering and so for those who don't know what TTL metering is I'll try and summarize it very quickly but um, and I'm only going to talk about ETTL I'm not going to talk about regular film TTL because that was from before my time really and, and I've never used it but ETTL the way it works is there's a a pre-flash that happens from this guy uh, and uh, it, it throws out a known amount of light. The camera then reads that amount of light uh, and sees how well illuminated the subject is. And then based on that, it then communicates to this guy and tells this guy how much light power to put out in order to properly uh, illuminate the subject. So for TTL to happen, obviously, there's going to there's going to be uh, communication happening between the camera and the uh, flash, and uh, without a radio system in place, how does that happen? So I decided to investigate this by uh, using the slow mo function on my camera. So I set it to 240 frames a second, and um, I thought I'd record and see what was happening. Uh, when you fire this thing uh, on TTL. So I'm going to show some clips of uh, what's going on. So you'll notice from that clip uh, there's a series of flashes that are happening from the camera that is picked up by the this flash gun. And I think the initial series of flashes 
is a way for this guy to tell this guy that we're going to do TTL, okay? And and I would like for you to flash and so, so that I can do the metering. And so then th you'll see this guy flash um, uh, once after the initial uh, series of flashes from this guy. And then what happens, I believe, is this this camera uh, uh, you know reads the the exposure, and then there's another series of flashes that are emitted by by the camera that's read by uh, the flash gun, and then there's a second uh, flash from the flash gun, um, and I think and that's when the picture is actually taken. So uh, again. A burst to communicate with the flash gun. This guy fires a pre-flash. This guy reads it. This guy then uh, fires off a burst to communicate the power required. And then this guy fires. This guy takes the picture. So that's how ETTL works. And I'll show uh, the clip again, and you can uh, follow along and uh, you know, just kind of confirm uh, what I'm showing you. Now, I've also tried doing this uh, without TTL. And so what happens is this guy fires a series of flashes to communicate with the flash gun uh, to tell it that we're not doing TTL. So this guy actually doesn't fire after the initial series of flashes. Then this guy fires a, a second round of uh, flashes to communicate with the with the gun to tell it okay we're going to take the picture so let's sync and then this guy fires and then this guy takes the picture okay so again to summarize this guy fires uh, a burst of of communicating flashes to this guy tells it that no TTL pre flash is required then this guy fires another series of flashes to communicate with this guy to tell it that it's time to take the picture. Then this guy fires. Then this guy takes the picture. So again, I'll show you the clip of uh, what happens without TTL. Uh, you know, and you can follow along and just make sure uh, that you, uh, you you see what it is that I'm saying. So yeah, I think that that's uh, very interesting. Uh, for a number of reasons. Number one, it, I think it confirms that it's a, a series of light pulses, uh, almost kind of like Morse code, uh, and and that's how the camera communicates with the flash gun, and that's how the older optical triggering system works for the Sony system. So that's one of the things that I got from this experiment. The other thing, of course, is uh, it's cool to know that I can use the slow-mo function on my iPhone to observe uh, these uh, events happening, uh, uh, these, these events that are happening really, really quickly, uh, faster than you know, most of us can comprehend. So that's cool. Uh, I can get why the slow-mo guys um, you know, do their stuff with the phantom cameras. The other thing that came out of this uh, series of testing that is probably not as obvious uh, to you at this point is the fact that with this optical triggering system, when this guy fires off camera, okay, you would think that this would be the only light that's uh, in the picture, right? because uh, the camera is only using the pop-up flash as a means of communication with this guy. But if you look at the video clips, what you'll notice is that this guy actually does still participate in the picture. You know, so when, when the camera is taking the picture, this guy flashes, but this guy also flashes. Now, however, uh, I have tested this in the past, and I can confirm that the power of this flash is tiny uh, usually in comparison to the flash gun. I mean, of course, this depends on how you set things up. Of course, you can set this power uh, way low uh, off TTL, for example, or, or you can do TTL and have this guy really far away. So 
um, you know, it's 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 going to be uh, uh, it's it's going to be relatively weak. In which case, this Papa Flash will contribute uh, a lot to the picture. However, in most shooting scenarios, what I can say is that um, this guy will greatly outpower this one, and uh, and so you won't see very much. Um, contribution from the pop-up flash. So in fact, I actually found this out uh, when I tried my hand at low-key photography. So that is a style of photography where you know most of the scene looks like it's black, but there's a sliver of light on your subject and that's provided by an off-camera flash. And so you can, uh, I have done it with this combination, um, you know, with this guy off to the side and you know, uh, this guy uh, taking the picture and, and even with this pop-up flash contributing to the scene provided that you uh, set your settings correctly this guy will outpower this guy so much that it will still look like a proper low-key shot so anyway I, I, I tried to take this uh, iPhone slow-mo thing a little bit further uh, you know to to see what other kind of high-speed uh, events I can look at with related to my uh, my cameras. Uh, so another thing that I tried to look at was uh, high speed sync. So as you know, when you take a picture with a flash, uh, your shutter speed is somewhat limited by the uh, shutter curtains in your camera, and this is because you know when the uh, uh, when the shutter is open, this thing is going to dump out a certain amount of light, which results in a certain amount of exposure uh, before the curtain closes. However, if your shutter speed gets to be above a certain speed, uh, what happens is no, uh, the, the 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 camera sensor is never completely exposed at any one time because as the front curtain opens the rear curtain is already starting to close before the uh, front curtain even makes it all the way across the sensor. And so, so that's why, at least for this camera, you can't go faster than 120th of a second uh, in terms of your shutter speed. Uh, so the exception comes when you do something called high speed sync. And what happens is uh, the camera realizes that the sensors only a portion of the sensors ever exposed at any one time and so this flash will fire multiple times in order to sort of piece together um, and that exposure um, across the frame it's a uh, it's a difficult concept to um, explain fully uh, and that's not what that's not the point of this video, so I don't want to dedicate a lot of time to explaining how high speed sync works. Um, you know, if you're interested, of course, you can go check out other videos to see uh, what it is exactly. But anyway, I tried to see what happens during high speed sync using the slow mo function on my iPhone, and I'll show some clips uh, so that you can see what's going on. Uh, so, um, the first clip I'm going to show you is. Uh, the the flash going with high speed sync turned on, and then uh, for the second clip, I'm going to show you what it looks like with the shutter speed slowed down to a point where I no longer require high speed sync. So so high uh, high speed sync is off now. So again, I'm going to show you what that clip looks like. So you might have noticed that the the tr the two clips look pretty much identical, and, and it's not a trick. Um, I, I was pretty surprised myself when I looked at the, the results. I think it's because high speed sync happens so quickly um, that 240 frames per second slow mo capture of the iPhone was not fast enough to differentiate between high speed sync and non high speed sync. So, if you want to see high speed sync in action, you'll probably need a better slow mo camera. Uh, you know, maybe maybe the slow mo guys can can take this up and, and show us what uh, it looks like uh, on a phantom camera. But anyway, that's it. Um, that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And I'll see you in the next one.